Hi, this is GED teacher Damon Tennant, and in this video, I'm going to show you and I'm going to walk you through how to do a GED math problem. Now, uh, I need to let you know that this is part of a five part video series. So uh, somewhere in this video, you'll be able to click on the link here and it'll take you to the playlist and you can watch all five videos. So here we are finally at video number five, but there's video one, two, three, and four that you can go back and watch. But since you're here, go ahead and watch video five. Then when you're done, go ahead and click on the link in this video to go back and watch those other videos in the playlist and you'll get a bunch of help. All right, let's go ahead and jump into question number five. And again, this is uh, the end of the line here for this particular video series. But now we're going to do something called find the slope of the line. So in the GD test, you need to know how to do these because they're going to give you these graphs and they're going to show you a line and there'll be a couple points on this line and you'll need to know how to do that to find the slope. But the very first thing you need to know, well, what is the slope? Well, let me show you the uh, uh, formula for finding slope. So that slope is uh, signified by the letter M. And then that's Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So what am I talking about here? Well, there are points here. And I'm just going to pull these points here that they've given us. So that first point they pull. So here's the X axis right here. So you go 0, 1, and then you go up 1 on the Y. So that first point there is point one one. And then the second point they give us on the x-axis, we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2, 3. So that's negative 4 because it went over on the x-axis and down 3, negative 3 on the y-axis. So these are the points x and y. Okay, now the biggest question I'm going to get is, does it matter? Does it matter which one you call X1 or Y1 or, or, or Y2 or X2? It doesn't. You just have to be consistent. So if you call this X1, if you call this X1, then this needs to be Y1. If you call this Y2, then this needs to be X2. It just has to be consistent. As long as it's consistent, it doesn't matter which set you call two and which set you call one. But now what we're gonna do is simply take these points and plug them in. Let me say one quick thing before I move on though. I don't wanna move too fast here. Again, I'm just trying to show you how to do these things, I'm trying to give you something practical. This is not designed to be an exhaustive lesson for you, but just to give you a sense of, man, if, if I could just learn this way, I might get some help. So here, this is the x-axis. So anything that's going up here on this y, anything that's going up here is positive. Anything that's going right here is positive. Anything going down here is negative. Anything going to the left there is negative. So this is negative y, this is negative x. This is positive x, this is positive y. And that's how that kind of shakes out. But let's jump in. So I'm going to just tap this minus 3 and I'm going to call that my y2 so I'm going to put that minus 3 and then so my y1 is going to become that 1 there minus 1 and then because I already tapped that as my y2 uh, like I said you just got to stay consistent so now this becomes my x2 so I'm going to put my minus 4 there for my x2 then that's my x1 I'm going to put my minus one. Now, if you've been working with me, you know, again, but this is not designed to be in depth. So I'm just going to go make that minus a positive um, and then change that sign to a negative. Whoops. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. Make that a positive. Make that a negative. So three plus negative negative three plus a negative one gives us a negative four and then negative four plus a negative one gives us a negative five and a negative over a negative we know is a positive so it is going to give us a slope of four over five so again i'm not trying to go in depth in this thing i'm just trying to teach you just how to do this stuff i'm just trying to set you up to show you man if i could learn this way then i could have some success i can actually crack algebra now there's some background things in here that i can show you but again just in this short video i want to give you some tools that you can use and at least to get some basic understanding so if you like this video please go ahead and give me a thumbs up down there again on youtube when you get thumbs up 
that lets YouTube know that this video is helpful and then they'll show it to more people. Now, if you want to get more of what I do, I try to put a new video out every week. I don't do that always, but I try to. Um, and so when you subscribe to me, you'll get a notification right to your email or on your phone or however you have your notifications for YouTube set up. So go ahead. If you like what I do or how I do it or what I'm doing it about, go ahead and subscribe to me. Now, I saved this for the last. You know, I kind of debated in my mind if I should do this or not because I don't like to play games with people. But at the same time, I've saved some things for those of you who made it to video five. And some of you are going to look out you're just going to find this video on YouTube and you're going to find yourself in video five of this five video series but for those of you who have stuck in I have designed two things one is I've made the PDF that I've been working on in these five videos available to you so if you go down in the video description and so if you're on YouTube right now you, you that description might be closed so you'll see a little arrow right beneath the video and you click it it opens it and in the video description you'll see a link to this PDF where you can just go and download it that's free to you and just my way of saying hey thank you for listening to me teach for five videos then the second thing is even more special and it still is free uh, I'm going to give you a practice test that has these five questions in it so you can do it on the computer the way you're actually going to see it on the GED test and it's going to give you five additional questions so it's going to help you to stretch out for what you've learned from me in these five videos to try it and see if you learn from it see how you do with it so again uh, description below the video you can link into these things and I think also I'm going to post it in this video so when you click uh, in the clickable links in this video it'll take you to a place where you can go and download this video and also uh, get access to that computerized version of this and you can do that all right on your smartphone or on your desktop or your tablet however you access this stuff um, and again get the help you need again this has been GED teacher Damon Tenen, and thank you for joining me for this five part series on GED math problems with your teacher walking you through it step by step giving you what you need to be successful